everybody. Happy Monday and welcome to Collider TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is the weekly show where we bring you the latest news from the world of television, plus talk about the week that was in TV. Joining us this afternoon is Josh McCuga. What's up, Sinead? What's, What's up, up, TV Talk fam? We're back. We have a jam-packed show. I, mean, I feel like the last two weeks of TV have been like the busiest weeks of television we've had since we started this show. Yeah. We only have one more week of CW shows, then we have a summer to binge our faces off, and I'm really excited about it. Who else is here, Sinead? Also joining us after this afternoon is Emma Fife. That's me. <laughs> I'm here. I'm having a great day. My boys won a, a Billboard Music Award last night, so I'm real happy. Who are the boys? Uh, my favorite K-pop band, <laughs> BTS. BTS! Yeah, That's, they won oh, top... Talking they, about? This is yes, what we've been talking funny. about! They won top social artist. Like, by, like, there wasn't even a competition. Like, they got 75% of the votes. <laughs> Who were the other bands up? Was it David Griffin and the Griffin? Age? <laughs> no, it was, it was like, like Justin, Justin Bieber, Bieber Selena, Selena Gomez. Gomez. Oh, <laughs> jinx, jinx. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you for funny. thinking I could be at the billboards. You're I appreciate my dog, that. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. The David, David well, Griffin and the David Griffin Spoiler band. alert. Who else is here today? <laughs> also here, uh, looking not that excited at all, is David Griffin. What? I'm so excited. I'm great. I'm happy to be here. I'm surrounded by the Witcher and Star Trek photos. This is a great day to be alive. <laughs> Man, we were starting off hot from Witcher, from K-pop to Witcher. Man, oh man, I had no idea who BTS was until you guys started talking about them. I don't even know what the Billboard Music Awards are really, but I was in Las Vegas this weekend when they were going on as well, so there was a lot of famous people, uh, including myself, walking around old Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, But apparently uh, BTS, is the, are they, are they going to have a TV show anytime soon? Like, uh, what's the deal? Well, they have a, uh, sh so they have a couple of different shows that they do for various is sort of like Korean outlets. There's an app called V Live in um, Korea that a lot of uh, celebrities use to do sort of like Live it's streams. kind of the equivalent of like Periscope okay. for us. Um, so they do a lot of stuff on there. But yeah, they they have like a little reality show uh, which is called Run BTS, <laughs> uh, where they do like ridiculous challenges. They had a bowling competition recently. Before that, they had an arcade challenge. I it was it. great. I, I had no it. idea Emma was such a huge fan. I, yeah, until I love them. I saw her Twitter blown up <laughs> last night because I was covering the awards, and then I'm like, all these BTS trees. I'm like, this is insane. <laughs> and I'm like, these are all. From Emma, like, <laughs> they're all Emma. It's amazing. It was a very, it was a very exciting. It was very momentous Emotional. because they're the only K-pop group that's ever received a nomination ever in the history of the Billboard Music Awards. Mm. So they were the very first to be nominated, and they won. So it, it's a really big deal. Yeah, yeah. really cool. Mm. Well, yeah. But don't worry, next year, David Griffin and the Griffinites, <laughs> they are coming in hot. What does hot. that band look like? It's just David and us in the background like... <laughs> We're a 40s doo-wop group. We're bringing 40s doo-wop back. People would back. listen. They would listen and, it's, and all of our songs have to do with uh, British television. Yeah, movies. and both. Yeah. Bold dark. Bold <laughs> dark. <laughs> Music composed by... Bold Oak. Oh, old dark, old dark. That's coming yeah. back next month. Old yeah. dark's coming back in June. Oh, joy! <laughs> yeah, joy. It's a burn great the day. show to the ground. <laughs> old dark is back. Fuck yes. <laughs> oh. Now, uh, before we get into the main news of the day. Um, we got some Game of Thrones pictures released this morning from EW. Now they're okay. Except for one. Yes. Daenerys Targaryen on top of a dragon the size of a 747 airplane. <laughs> She looks like a little. She looks like a little Cody up there on top of the on top Aww. of the dragon. Aww. <laughs> little sh little Sneed to freeze on top of a dragon <laughs> as this dragon destroys everything. Uh, yep. That picture is incredible. Yeah, I am. Uh, this is what I've been waiting for. Yes. I've just been waiting for Danny to come to Westeros and just conquer and take back what's hers. And I'm I'm all in. I want the dragon to eat Cersei Lannister like the lawyer in Jurassic Park. <laughs> just, she's on a toilet and just. <laughs> It, I mean, it would be, it would like be bringing everything full circle because her dad died on the toilet. Yep. So, you know. Oh, <laughs> that's not a good way to go. I don't nah. want to go on the toilet. Yeah. Damn, that's not good, isn't that like so Elvis went? Awful. Elvis went like that. Yeah. Uh, one of, uh, one of, the, pre one one of, of the presidents? Go? I don't know about. Mm. That. I think you're right. Taft? Yeah, somebody yeah. went on the, I think a president went on the toilet. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, uh, uh, in uh, Sopranos, one of Tony's closest yeah. guys had a heart attack on the toilet yeah. as well. So, oh, what horrible. do you think of the picks, Dave O? Um, I'm liking them. I'm oh, excited. You have to sing the rest of the show. Oh, that's right. All okay. I want to and the two. No. Uh, I, we were talking about when we're going to get the trailer. Yes. I think we have two episodes left of The Leftovers. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to get it on the, I think before the finale, we're going to get the new trailer. That's going to drop that nice. Maybe two weeks. Two weeks, we're going to get the trailer. Do you think before or do you think after? Before. 
Okay. Interesting. Before. Okay. Because I, I was leaning towards after. Well, yeah. the thing is, after Leftovers, it goes into Silicon Valley, so I think they'd go for the big drama first, because mm -hmm. they always kick off their nights with the drama, then it goes Silicon Valley, then Veep. I think okay. they're going to kick it off with the drama first. And I think. Know, this is my prediction. Yeah. This is the guess. And I'd imagine we'll probably get some sort of Curb Your Enthusiasm teaser, maybe before the oh, yeah. finale of mm -hmm. Veep. Oh, because yeah. uh, one of the guys on Curb was on... Uh, Baseball, the baseball morning show on MLB Network mm -hmm. is really exciting. And um, he was talking about how it should be. Now he knows what da David doesn't watch today, <laughs> live with Regis and Kelly. I'm Regis a Dodgers fan. I, like I like the Dodgers. I like the Dodgers. Yeah. <laughs> like the Dodgers. Uh, and, but you also watch MLB TV, so. A right, and they were talking about how it's going to be back in October, so. Gotcha. Yeah, they have to yeah. have a trailer out. It's, got, it's coming. Mm -hmm. Very soon. Yeah. All right, all mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm again, a, 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 a tiny little a blonde haired girl riding an airplane. It's just, it looks incredible. I, I'm just so excited. All right, Shane, what's next? Netflix, which just last week officially became the supreme leader of the entire world, announced that they're developing a Witcher series for the streaming service. Witcher created by, is that Andre? Andre. Andre. Oh, yeah. Silent J. Fancy. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. Polish. Uh, created by Andre Sapkowski, an eight part book series and a very popular video game series, as well, follows Geralt. A Geralt. Witch, Geralt, Geralt, a yeah. witcher. Sorry, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> witcher. Why would you have bothered? Well, well, it's very aggressive. aggressive, there. Very aggressive. There. Geralt. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. I appreciate it. Uh, Geralt. Geralt. <laughs> a witcher with supernatural abilities who fights off dark forces. The expanse of Sean Daniel and Jason Brown will serve as executive producers with Sepkowski on the project. David, the video game adaptations are finally coming to TV. This is exciting. <laughs> this is very this is big news. Like I said, it's a great day to be alive, great time to be alive. We have The Witcher is coming. It, this is a very ambitious project because one, I think it's eight stories. There's five novels and I believe three short stories. Mm -hmm. Geralt of Rivia, the Butcher of Blaviken is a witcher. He's not a witch hunter. Witcher. He's a witch. So he's basically a gun for hire, sword for hire in this case, that goes out and slays monsters. He takes contracts, he slays monsters, but of course he's involved with sorceresses, he has mm -hmm. relationships with them. Ooh. He has a surrogate daughter named Siri that he, he cares about very deeply. Siri? So, Siri. Siri. Like, Sorrel. Like, I, 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 her name is Sorrel or something like that, okay. but they call her Siri. Okay. Nice. Um, and I, I've only played The Witcher 3, but I'm on my third playthrough right now. It's one of my favorite games of all time. The stories are just so well done. I hope they actually adhere to the stories that they've already had in the books and the video games and stick to those instead of creating some crazy story that could do a lot and like remember oh, doom remember yeah. how bad doom was or it had remember to do with the video game like resident evil yeah. all of it nothing and apparently to do with the video they're game. rebooting it assassin's creed nothing to do with the video game like i hope they keep it to it's amazing the story. Yeah. all these video games out there and the storylines already mm. inherent in these videos yeah games. just take the well, story it's it's yeah. interesting to me because I, i've been thinking a lot about video game adaptations recently and why they're so bad because right now i'm playing uh Persona 5, which is very, very anime. And I'm like, this could very easily be Shocker. an anime. It, it, well, I mean, <laughs> Aunt Emma Hello. right here. Uh, <laughs> anyway. I, Aunt Emma. Uh, so anyway, but I was thinking about how, because there, there is an animation of it as well. Yeah. And I'm like, but I think you lose something when you're not actually like as involved in the story as you are playing the game. Okay. You That's know what I mean? That's one of the things that was a game from movies. You're, yeah. you're, you're controlling the character. You know, you might die. You might have to yeah. pick a different strategy, but you're in control. Even though you might be playing a linear story, I'm you're sure. in control. Sure. It's a really good thought. Sure. Yeah. I like that. Uh, however, with Witcher, it's like, it, it is, the, the video game itself was based on existing material. Mm -hmm. So I think that because it was originally in a format that was meant to just read and enjoy this story that I think it really could be quite successful as a series. Because it, better it, than a movie, I think. I think oh, we have a better yeah, chance of being a success as a television series. I'm so glad Netflix is doing it. Yeah, yes, yeah, that yeah. gives mm -hmm. me a lot of hope. Yeah. Uh, is there, what's like the sex to death ratio? Like, are we talking Game well, there's, of Thrones there's, there, there's so many boobs yeah. in that <laughs> video game. I mean, there's relationships. You can you can get entangled. You can have multiple relationships yeah. and then you don't get any relationship at all. There's love stories. I See, mean, that's, yeah, it's And great. that's part of the thing that I'm, because especially you playing like a game nice. like Witcher or like in Persona 5, also like there's a, there's a big social simulation aspect mm -hmm. to it. So it's like- There's multiple I, endings. Yeah. Multiple and, endings, and you yeah. can, and like, it's like you can, you can, have relationships mm -hmm. with you choose who you have relationships yeah. with in the video game so yeah. that choice is kind of taken out of your hands when Which it's just true. in a in a in a medium that you're just watching instead of like playing along mm -hmm. with and then i mean i feel like people that are like hardcore shippers of certain couples are just gonna get real mad yeah i mean you'll, you'll <laughs> like it just it, i mean it's it, it's it's violent you know, there's there's romance, there's there's monsters, there's slang. I mean, it's it, it's everything you want in a big epic fantasy story, like a Game of Thrones. Yeah, Boom. but more Witcher. fantasy. Is Witcher 
the ne- is Witcher's like Netflix Game of Thrones. Is that what they're hoping this is? Oh, I think so. I would. I, I think. I think, so. I think they were hoping Marco Polo was going to be. That was their hundred million dollar investment. Yeah. It didn't work out. But if they can match that scale yeah. and put it into The Witcher, yeah. this could be awesome. I'm definitely, I'm for this. definitely yeah, interested in I'm so in this. excited. <laughs> oh, Witcher, Netflix coming in hot. It's good news, Josh. It's good, good news. Good news. <laughs> Geralt! <laughs> Geralt! Not Geralt. Oh, Geralt! God, damn it. Geralt! I botched it. We got to just get David a shirt that just says, Geralt! <laughs> exclamation point. And that's... <laughs> right. maybe, maybe like three exclamation points. It, 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 it's based off Polish lore, so I'm sure there's people from Poland are probably chiming in and be like, actually, mm. let me tell you what's really pronounced. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's how we say it in America. Geralt. How, so we don't know for saying it right. We could be saying it wrong. Sinead yeah. could have actually Sinead said it right. right. Geralt. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, Geralt. I'd never say it like that again. <laughs> Geralt! Geralt! <laughs> all right, what's, what's next, Sinead? The long-awaited Star Trek Discovery trailer finally hit the masses during all of the upfront trailer madness last week. And that's all Josh is going to say, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. David and Emma, the Star Trek gurus here on TV Doc. Take it away. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this spacesuit uh, that's on the screen behind us. It's Buzz no, Lightyear. <laughs> uh, no, overall, overall, I I yeah. liked it. It looks promising. I love how uh, diverse the cast is, and that's something that has always been like Star Trek's always been kind of yep. ahead of the game in terms of that anyway. And it's mm-hmm. it's just really nice to see them continuing with that, you know, trend. Uh, I I think that the ser- I mean, it's supposed to be pre-original series. I mean, Spock's father is in it. That's who James Frain is playing. Yeah. So I, I, th- I think for me right now, I just sort of feel like, okay, cool. This looks like the Abrams movies. Yeah. Well, that's, um, yeah, that's what I got from the trailer. And that's the only thing that, and I, I actually enjoy the Abrams movies. Not one of the yeah, Star Trek Yeah, no, I don't hate like them it, either. But it's a different style because yeah. old school Star Trek is about exploration. That's why some people who, even though I like both, like Star Wars mm-hmm. and like Star Trek, because mm-hmm. Star Wars is more kind of action adventure, sure. space opera. Um, whereas Star Trek is like, look, we go to this planet this episode, we meet this new civilization, we talk to this new civilization, yeah. we get to learn something about them, and then we move on. And this looks more like the Abrams I, stuff, like it's I more agree. like kind of action adventure. And I really, and as somebody who also loves both Star Wars and Star yeah. Trek, like the thing I love about Star Trek is the fact that it is that kind of, you know, exploration story. It's mm-hmm. not about the big action adventure fighting, of course it's you in run there. into it's conflict. In right. Of course you There's run into conflict. There's always a clean ons again. Right. Always but a clean ons. But, it, but for the most part, like they're not trying to get involved in intergalactic no. wars. It's not like Star Wars where they're like, we need to throw down the evil regime that's ruling the galaxy. It's right. like, nope. By and large, we're at peace. This is about exploration. And with a with a you know subtitle like Discovery, that leads me to believe that that's what it should be. I hope be. What it is. I hope, hope it is about Discovery. And I mean, maybe maybe what we're seeing is a time period where things were perhaps a bit more tumultuous before we got into original mm-hmm. series, where it is very, very much that sort of you know exploration model. But do you model. think it was because... Um, like they wanted to appeal to a much bigger audience than the already built-in Star Trek audience. That they were like, let's make this They're an action adventure. Oh yeah, new movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. JJ did. JJ made basically a Star Wars film. I mean, he admitted that. JJ oh, yeah. admitted no, he that does. he's a bigger Star Wars fan than he's a Star Trek fan. So he basically yeah. made his version of a Star Wars movie into a Star Trek film. Right. Yeah. So this is more of that. I mean, it definitely but, looks like it. Yeah. 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 Even yeah. though yeah. even though he's not involved, no. it's very clear that. They're taking some pages out right. of the Abrams book and putting them into this. And it's series. sad that Brian Fuller is not involved yeah. because we're all loving American Gods. Oh, a lot of yeah. Hannibal fans out there. I need to pushing yeah. daisies, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's sad that he's daisies. not involved. Because in yeah. uh, this looks like no Fuller. This isn't. This is not. Yeah, Brian I, Fuller, I don't. No. That's the thing is, I don't see any Brian Fuller in this at, at all. all. Yeah. And I, I wanted to see what he would have done. Again, it, uh, to me, the trailer was. I'm, I was very much looking forward to seeing it. Yeah. And I was sort of just like, okay, it's vanilla ice cream. Like yeah. it, it, it wasn't, you know, I wasn't so excited after I watched it. Like, wow, now that looks cool. I kind of watched it. And again, I'm not the biggest Star Trek fan in the world. So I watched it with very objective eyes. I wasn't like, right. man, I'm a Star Trek fan. This better follow through. Right. I watched it. And I was kind of like, OK. Yeah. Right. It's- yeah. I, I would say, like, as a Star Trek fan, I watched it and I like I didn't feel disappointed, yeah. but I didn't feel particularly excited. And there was a lot of set pieces that looked very green screeny. Right. I and think we just heard so much. Some people were getting upset in the comments like about a month ago. I made some comments about the budget. And they're like, no, no, no. We heard from Variety the budget was this like six, seven months ago. I'm like, things change in Hollywood <laughs> Real like time. that. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, this is a much different show than what we heard six, seven months ago. So, that worries me. But... I'm I'm hold, I'm hoping yeah. I hope it's good I'm gonna watch it I'm gonna support it I just hope it's good Yeah We have to pay extra for it I'm <laughs> we, not a cord cutter I have cable so I already pay my cable bill but I have to pay extra on top of it For me if I have HBO I get HBO Go automatically I don't have to pay that. extra for it 
But for as CBS, well you shouldn't. I have to pay extra for CBS All Access. That's it's annoying. It's so weird. Silly. You got to pay an extra seven dollars a month to watch our show. Nope. Nope. Well, actually, I am. Yeah, I am going to watch. Well, so I, yeah, I am paying it. Sorry, we're, we're making that, we're Sorry, making that trip out to Pasadena. <laughs> okay, uh, let's get into. We're going to do basically two high lows today. Uh, but before we get into that, I'd like to let everybody know out there that next Monday. Now I know this week we have all of the CW finales, so us being not on the air next Monday for Memorial Day is kind of not the best timing as far as finales go. But that's just the, the nature of the beast with schedules and everything. We couldn't pre-record. Uh, an episode to release on Monday for you guys, and next week after that, we there's just no time in the collider schedule for us to shoot and put up uh, an episode for you all. So unfortunately, Monday, uh, this upcoming Monday, we will not be here. But Monday, June fifth, I believe, is the date. Is that just a second? Uh, that sounds right. -ish. Monday, June fifth, <laughs> I believe, we'll be back. So next week, this is our we're we're taking a week off after today, so we don't have it. But again, we're live right now. So if you want to send in some Twitter questions to Sinead. Uh, hashtag at Collider TV Talk. She is curating all whilst hanging out with us. So we're going to start the first section of High Lows, and this is all about the upfront trailers. I know a lot of you guys have been tweeting us a ton of trailers from last week. Um, so thank you for sending me links, because a lot of times uh, some of the trailers kind of go, uh, we miss them. And uh, But uh, Collider.com right now has up on their, uh, the five worst, their five worst, and their five best, which I thought were, was a nice little curation <laughs> as well. But let's just go. We'll start with David. David, what was your high? What was your low? trailer for the upfront. Let's start with low first. Okay. Let's go, you know, let's go <laughs> with the bad news first. Let's talk about a little show called Deception Abra on Kadabra. ABC. Now, oh. now, you know how much we love procedurals over here. Now, <laughs> this guy is a magician Woo! who solves crimes. Geralt! He's the world's greatest <laughs> illusionist. He's David Copperfield or David Blaine, whatever, yes. you know, those guys. Yeah. And But what if David Blaine or Copperfield worked with the FBI and he solved crimes? Mm -hmm. That's completely plausible. <laughs> so I don't know. This looks really dumb. Um, but I'm going to check it out because I'm curious. I want to see how a magician is going to work with the FBI. But, man, that is a low for me. Thumbs down. Thumbs down uh, on deception. We go, good news. Hi. The alien, or not the, just alienist is yes. what it's called. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Uh, if you've ever seen the show The Nick by Steven Soderbergh on Skinamax, this looks just like that. Uh, a, little, a little before, late 1800s. Mm -hmm. um, that's 1896, that's, 1896, I think 1896, I yeah. yeah, so it's going to be about these uh, people in like mental hospitals. Yeah. They have that term, the alienist. You have Luke Evans, you know, who's in Beauty and the Beast. <sighs> Dracula Untold. You have Daniel Brühl from um, uh, Glorious Rush. Bastards. Yeah. yeah, and Rush. Yeah, Rush. just a fantastic actor. And then you have Dakota Fanning. Yeah. It's been around forever. So, I mean, I'm... This I haven't is, seen looks, her in much in a while, either. Yeah, she, her sister's been getting a little more play. Yeah, lately. her sister has been. Yeah, yeah. she... I mean, she... I, th I think she went... She was going to school and stuff. Mm -hmm. for, like, she she took, like, a little break from acting. She's very smart. Yeah. Yes. And, it looks, um, and, yeah, she looks great. <laughs> yeah, she looks great in this. It looks like Daniel Brühl's character is trying to understand the criminally insane and trying to get in the mind. It looks like maybe he's losing his mind during yeah. that process. It definitely but, I mean, looks very It doesn't cool. look like a TNT show. No. I'm kind of curious. You I know what look, it look looks like to me though. is, like, what you would want out of a really good Jekyll and Hyde adaptation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. Well, like, I wasn't sure. I'm like, wait, are they doing Jack the Ripper? Like, I wasn't sure what they totally were doing. Totally thought it was like, wait yeah, a second. Same, yeah, same really thing. Time yeah. After right. time. yeah. Uh, but kind of cool. Had that Nick feel to it. <laughs> right. Had a little bit of a taboo feel yeah. to it. Yeah. I, I kind of dug. Yeah, weird yeah. meetings and brothel house. Yeah. Anything, yeah. anything yeah. else stand out to you out there, David, that you wanted to mention before we move on to Emma's? Oh, Emma's. anything else? Um, no, I mean, the other things that stood out, we're going to talk about okay. in here. Yeah. I've seen this list, so I'm just going to stick with those. Gotcha. Right yeah. All right. Emma Foy. Uh, well, the low for me, and there were a lot of not so great ones. Uh, but I am going to go uh, with a little show called L.A. to Vegas, which is a Fox show. <laughs> this looks awesome. No, wait. No, are people going to L.A. and they're going to go to Vegas? And then yes. come back. And it's come back literally, okay, okay. it's about yeah. like a small airline that literally just flies from L.A. to Vegas. Like and the wacky characters <laughs> that uh, work on board. Now, here's the thing. If this were a trailer for a movie, yeah. I'd be like, you know what? This could be a really fun, dumb comedy. Yeah. But to me, this feels like a one-joke show. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's there's room for it to be a series because you introduce the different passengers that you have on the flights. But overall, it just, to me... Not, not, not the Dylan McDermott with the mustache? You weren't a fan? No, okay. no. I mean, and again... I giggled a lot. Like, I... I, <laughs> I saw the merit in that character. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, to me, I was like, this could be a really funny character in a movie. Yeah. I just don't really see this sustaining I don't disagree a compelling with you. season. I don't disagree with you because I think um, uh, a lot of these trailers that, we're, that we're, we can, we'll mention briefly too when we go through our highs and lows is 
a lot of them were like, you know what, this would make a great movie. And sometimes you see a movie trailer, like, you know, this would make an even better show. Right. It's almost like the flip. And I agree with you in this one. This could make an awesome, stupid, buddy comedy movie. Right. Again, it's kind of like Making History, which Sinead and I love the pilot. Uh, yeah, it got canceled I love by Fox. that pilot. It canceled by Fox, unfortunately, because the show never went anywhere else yeah. after that. They wrote I, a pilot, and they're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, what else do, what else do yeah. we do now? Mm -hmm. like you, yep. And again, it's like you can jump around to different periods in history, but having the time constraints of a film, I think, would have been better for that premise. Yes. And I think that's what's going on with this mm -hmm. for me, for sure. Uh, however, uh, the series that I am so excited about is The Mayor. Yes. On ABC. Holy cow, did that like, came out of no, That yeah. came out of nowhere for yep. me. Um, David Diggs is the producer on it uh, who created the role of Thomas Jefferson in Hamilton. Mm. And he's going to, um, uh, Scott Derrickson, they're doing. Um, oh shoot. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, David Diggs is gonna be the star of, uh, uh, what's the one? I put I put it in here. Uh, no, I didn't. No, I didn't, didn't put it in there. Keep, okay. keep talking. Yeah, about I'll that. keep talking. You look it up. It. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So and I I adore David Diggs. Uh, he's a he's just an incredibly smart, talented person, and it, I'm very excited that he's serving as executive producer on this. Uh, it's about a kid, a, a young man, uh, who wants to be a rapper and finds out that it is very easy to run for local office. Yeah. So as part of his like scheme to gain some notoriety, he runs for mayor of his little town and he wins. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. And then it looks like it's gonna be this really like lovely heartfelt comedy about him really making a positive change in the world mm -hmm. by getting into this, cause he's gonna be an unconventional mayor and it's like maybe that's exactly what this town needs. And then you've got Leah Michelle in there who's playing like the overachiever girl who ends up instead of like being at odds with him decides to embrace him as like a partner in government, I, it looks Kinda great. Kind of looks like a cool thing because I think there's a lot of people that watch American politics right now, or politics in general, that are young people and think to themselves, who are these idiots? Yeah. You know what I mean? And if you're a young person, you you are trying to be a vehicle for change and uh, you know look at it with objective eyes and try mm -hmm. and listen to all aspects of it instead of being just like dudes like no nah, i'm just gonna take birth control away right you know like right, it's, it's, yeah. it, it kind of has a very heartfelt two thing david diggs is gonna start in the snowpiercer pilot oh snowpiercer scott uh, derrickson's gonna direct it um i'm who i'm excited yeah. about that well, <laughs> I guess maybe i should mention one of these just because i don't know if we're gonna talk about it i actually loved the trailer Thumbs up for Young Sheldon. Yes, I agree. That was a great trailer. And I'm like, this could it's be. It's gotten really trailer. bad reviews too. Because oh no, I, yeah, and it's, I was really shocked thing. by it. It's it looks <clears throat> so different mm -hmm. from yeah. Big Bang Theory. Mm -hmm. I'm not really into Big Bang Theory. That creepy kid from um, Big Little Lies. Yeah. Yeah. Creepy. It, well, he's like my favorite character in the whole show. Well, he's kind of got like just creepy look to him at points oh, in that so show. Good. But he looks kind of cute and fun in this Young Sheldon. And show. it looks like it's about him, like learning to connect with his family who he's very yeah. different from like mm -hmm. I uh, that was a definite high for yeah. me yeah. absolutely um, but not to cut you off on the mayor because no, I really, no. and I think that's a cool idea again a show thinking outside the box mm -hmm. while trying to do like a little bit of social change that isn't like so Shoving it's a it family down yeah. yeah it's a family that has a monster as a son this fall on Fox no like <laughs> this is this is really good I, I dug it um for me I, I'm, I put the mayor in there as one of my highs as well also the crossing because that looks good. It looks like a mixture of the killing mm -hmm. and the bridge and some supernatural aspect of, and Steve Zahn looks like he's having, a, it, it, that, that show looked really, really cool. They're coming from a different time, crossing through some kind of panel. And I know it, I talk about right. it all the time on here that I don't like time travel, but I don't know what kind of time travel this is because it's not Barry Allen just going to try and find Iris in Earth 7. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, this, this looks awesome. For me, by far the worst trailer that I have seen this year or like, did somebody take a producer and just be like, make a 90s show that sucks and punches them? And he's like, awesome, nine JKL. It's like, hey, my mom's an overbearing Jewish mother and so is my father. And I have to go back and live at home. Oh no, and it's a multicam. It's like, good oh, God. And not only, not only uh, does he have to live at home, it's like a situation of three apartments that are all next to each other. So the parents live in one, he lives in the middle one, and then his brother and his wife are temporarily living in the one. It's uh... it, it, the show. I, I hope that it gets canceled during commercial break. <laughs> you know, like it, it airs and they're like, no, we'll just go to a football game. Just, just go. You know what's interesting is that it shows that as far as TV has come in so many years, yes. it really hasn't changed that much. 
No. Like right. the same style of making television is there. Like you still have the procedurals. It's called, but now we have a magician. Yes. It's just yeah. called deception. I mean, it's yeah. the same shows. Yeah. And it's, uh, uh, th there has to be some sort of back working thing that they, there was some huge <clears throat> penalty that they had to pay or they had to just put the show on the air and make the pilot. That's the only reason I can see this getting made because there was, there can't be one person in the room that's like, oh my God, this is going to be the next. This is us. Like this show yeah. is freaking terrible. <laughs> but so did Kevin can wait. But again, Kevin James's penalties are so sky high that they're like, let's mm -hmm. just put the show in the air and we'll lose way less you, money. You know what? When we were kids, NBC, they used to do like, remember like these, um, I don't know, these like mini series specials. They yeah. did like the Odyssey. Oh, yeah. Remember like, I think it was uh, Vanessa Williams and Armand DeSante yeah. was in Ode o the Odysseus story, but they don't do that in the States anymore. BBC does it all the all time. All the time. Like Queen Elizabeth. I mean, no, granted, they can shoot over there on location. It's easier for them, but they do all these like historical epics. They don't do that in America anymore. Like yeah. the TV movie, like Lorraine Bobbitt. Yeah, yes. TV, yeah. yeah. Or yeah. now it's all Lifetime TV. Right, movie, right. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go. Uh, Sinead didn't throw any highs and lows in there. Sinead, did you want to throw anything? Sure. Okay. Um, sorry, I didn't even, I didn't look no, at this segment. Good. I apologize. Cool, cool. No. Um, so <laughs> I will agree with Emma that LA to Vegas is probably really low down there, mostly just because I watched the whole thing and I was like, okay, I don't, I don't care at all. <laughs> I mean, she said the F word. I don't, I don't effing care at all. Yeah. Um, but I also was really surprised by Dynasty, just because like who was asking for that? <laughs> a remake of Dynasty? <laughs> yeah, and it's just like when you watch it, it's like something I've already seen 150 gajillion times, and the ones that I've seen are, are gold to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like maybe, maybe it'll be exactly th the right type of genre that I know I Did enjoy. You watch the show Sex and Drugs and Rock and Roll on FX? Did you ever watch no. the Dennis Leary show? The girl that's the lead in that is the girl that's the lead in Shit Dynasty. Yeah. yeah. Shit Dynasty? Yeah. <laughs> It's the character on Unbreakable with Kimmy Schmidt, which oh, yeah. is uh, which just came back for uh, season yeah. three. I was uh, half watching it. Remember Shit Dynasty? So freaking funny, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that one to me stood out the most just because I was like, what, what is this doing here? But yeah. I think LA to Vegas is probably the worst just because it looked the most boring. Yeah. Um, and then I really liked The Mayor too. But the one, if I just be a little bit different just because I want to talk about yeah. it, mm -hmm. the one that I really truly enjoyed um, was The Orville. And I never expected yeah. to yeah. enjoy it because sometimes Seth MacFarlane can get on my nerves as much as I adore and love him. Same sure. But he needs the right type of space for his comedy because it's very in your face. That's why Family Guy is, will always be my favorite mm -hmm. animated adult sitcom ever in the world yeah. um, because it's the right way to do it and I felt like the or the Orville is good because they know they know what they're doing they know what it is and they're okay with it being kind of stupid yeah. and that to me is the best way to do like a far-fetched show because it's super far-fetched and it could, that kind of show can either crash and burn mm -hmm. or be really great. Well, right. and we already know from Seth MacFarlane's work on Family Guy and other projects that he's done that he has a good concept of like identifying tropes yeah. and really making fun of them. And there's so, so many oh, tropes yeah. in right. science fiction and because he's not limited to just Star Trek, yeah. let's be yeah. honest. Right. It, d it definitely had a very charming space. It did. Yeah. Like if I was going to write a space comedy, yeah. yes. Because uh, I, I I brought it up a while back and, I, and I, you guys tweeted at me and told me the show, but the guys from It's Always Sunny produced a show just like the Orville. When we were talking about the Orville being made, it reminded me of this. And the trailer, very, very similar to that one. It's a very similar premise. But this one just had that Seth MacFarlane. Mm -hmm. Timing. Yeah. The, timing it, the timing is on point. Is all there. The part where he like runs through the, the blob. blob. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, it just reminds it's me of Norm like... It's McDonald too. That's like, <laughs> don't worry about it, man. I know. Well, <laughs> he like takes everything just a little like longer than it needs to be. That's yeah. why... When Lois hits her leg, the exactly yes. it's like iconic because you're just you laugh at first, then you stop, and then you laugh again, yeah. and right. that's the moment I felt when that happened. He's like, "You okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm good, man. Are you okay?" Like, it's, I was just like, "Man, the timing is so great." It really is. Yeah. So yeah. I really, I have high hopes, and or I hope hell. that it doesn't like you know turn out like making yeah. history. Definite high, definite high. Yeah. Okay, so we have Law and Order, True Crime, the Menendez brothers murders. That'll be the first time I've watched Law and Order in a long time. I know, I right? See that. Uh, with Edie Falco, mm -hmm. that's a high for me. I yeah. love these true crimes and. And I mean, even though it's Dick Wolf and it's NBC, it's not procedural, so it has it does have that that network feel to it. So it won't be like FX level, I don't think. But I still think it looks pretty damn good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it definitely looks like they're they're taking more risks than yeah. you might see on a network. So and, and I, I like Eddie Falco. And we kind of so. knew this was coming, but my buddy Tanner, who you've met before, he was uh, the final one of the final two brothers. Like when they were casting, one guy got it and he didn't. Oh, it was pretty no. funny. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Life sentence, the new one on the CW with your girlfriend, Pretty Little Liars. Yeah, it looks okay. It kind of yeah. looks like 
What was that show they had last year? Yep, yep, yep. It was the, the same bucket thing. list or the bucket, something. It was, yeah. It was like before she had I like die. a bucket list and it Frequency. was uh, it was like a hundred yeah. things she wanted to do before she died. She oh, the guy. That got canceled. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, it could be good. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean it's basically about her finding out that she's not gonna die anymore and having right. to cope with And then her family's like, We spent eight years saving you and now our lives suck. And I'm like, oh, that's mm -hmm. a little that's yeah. a little yeah. bleak. Yeah. 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 Me, myself, and I Again, this is one I said to you, Emma, that I thought looked more like a movie than a TV show, but also it could have legs as a TV show. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed this trailer. Again, this looked very like touching and heartfelt to me, and it's about like Bobby Moynihan at different stages of his life, and mm -hmm. obviously they're going to jump back and forth between a lot of it. Um, I, uh, I, I agree, though. Like, I don't... I think this could have a really good season, but yep. I don't mm. see this being a long-term success. But I said the same thing about This Is Us last year, and I was 100% <laughs> wrong. I legitimately said almost those exact same words. Yeah. So uh, I'm an idiot. We all know that. Yeah. Um, Orville, we talked about Young Sheldon. We all loved. I thought it was great. Breaking Up Together. Splitting Up Together. Splitting Up Together. Yeah. Sorry. That actually mm. looked pretty charming. Yeah, I, yeah, mean, I agree. Jenna Fisher, yeah. you know, again, a little twist on the same kind of idea like you talked about, David. Mm -hmm. I'll give that a medium high. What do you guys think? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm I'm hopeful about that. I'll it's, check that one it's out. It's in that category where I'm like, this could be good. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah I'll check it out. Okay, uh, Alex Inc. <laughs> Come I didn't on, watch that one. What Zach on Braff? earth is that? I was just like, Zach Braff, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah Zach Braff was on. I think it was episode two of the new Bill Nye show. Yeah, Zach Braff kind of oh, shows yeah, he up. Was. I was like, oh, there's Zach Braff. Yeah, where's he been? He leaves Scrubs. He makes one of the greatest independent movies I, the last fifteen years. Yeah, and then he then he the does Garden that, State. The Garden yeah. State. Then he does like the Last Kiss, which was brutal. And then he just kind of like disappeared. And he shows up in this one. He's like, I'm a dad who does podcasts. I'm like. I don't know if that's, yeah. a, that's a thing. <laughs> I don't. Anyway, it, it just didn't look good because he was also trying to be like Goofy Scrubs guy yeah. too. So, uh, you know, I don't know if that's if that's this, a show for me. This was like a thumb slightly down it's like for me. Trending yeah. Down. yeah, trending down. Uh, Wisdom of the Crowd, the new Jeremy Piven show. Uh, crowdsourcing crime fighting. Is that again, legal? Again, I don't know if that's legal. I don't think that's legal. Yeah, I don't think I don't. that you can catch a murderer via uh, social media. But if you can, great. Well, you have to trust CBS. Like they'll make it work. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they'll for probably me, make it work. It's the most watched network. It is. Yeah. Most watch network. For me, I felt like with this one that I didn't hate the premise, yeah. but the actual execution, as far as I can see in the trailer, was a little like, eh, yeah. for me. Yeah. No, agreed. You know, I mean, you want to watch Pivot something good, you watch Mr. Selfridge. Yeah. Very good show. Solid. Solid. <laughs> it's good show. Solid. And David, where David does Griffin Mr. Selfridge the... take place? Mr. Selfridge, but he's American. But it takes a, place. It takes place in London. Correct. Mm -hmm. And right. Selfridge is just still a huge department store in London. It's one of the like he was the one who came up with the whole like when you walk into the store and there's perfume everywhere. That was his idea. Interesting. Yeah. And who knew that also a big fan of perfume, Poldark. He's a big perfume guy. <laughs> Loves Poldark smelling smells no, he, good. He, like, Poldark, Poldark is he's in the field. He's a man. Oh, he's grit and dirt. Damn. Muscle. That's a man. I was right hoping there. we get like a Poldark perfume. No, it's like a Poldark a, perfume. But what you could, but you could like bottle wearing? that like that like manly that essence of Poldark. <laughs> Ooh, it's like Kramer in the beach. <laughs> yeah. Just it just smells like grass and sadness. <laughs> it's not easy living back in those times. It's hard living. Hard living. <laughs> is that Poldark you're wearing? <laughs> uh, okay, let's go to superhero rundown. You guys are probably wondering why do you talk about the Black Lightning trailer during the upfront thing. Well, guess what? We're gonna talk about it right now. Black Lightning trailer. <laughs> yeah, all awesome. everyone's like erasing their comments. Yes. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. We're sorry. Edit, edit, oh, edit. Oh, YouTube oh, comment. Oh, sorry. Edit, edit, edit. Uh, I, I, this trailer was awesome. Oh, it was fantastic. This reminds me of like The Incredibles, kind of. Yeah. Where you know it's a retired kind of guy coming back. He's got daughters. Uh, things with the gangs. Like it. It looks. What I like about it is it doesn't look like super. It's all the supernatural stuff. Like mm -hmm. he's fighting gang members. Yeah. He's fighting the darkness in his town. Yeah. The, I dug other, it. the other thing that I really enjoyed about this trailer was the fact that he's like kind of happily retired. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. like he's dealing with sort of the demons of his past being a superhero, and mm -hmm. that's obviously something that he's going to embrace again. But he's the principal at the school. He's got a family who he loves. Yeah. I, I liked that the trailer was from the oldest daughter's perspective. It's cool. Yeah. It, yeah. I'm looking, really looking forward to it. I was going to get kind of the best of both worlds. Going to get some of that high school drama yeah. from the girls, from the daughters, and then some of the adult mm -hmm. drama from his point of view. So I think I'm excited about this. And Chris Williams is a great actor. He was on Heart of Dixie yeah. for a while. I mean, I didn't really watch it that much, but I uh, the scenes say. I've seen him in, he's good. And I think he looks great in this role. I, I've met him before. He's a tall dude. He's like six four. Wow. Yeah. So I'm definitely excited for this. For like, what do you think, Shane? Well, I definitely liked it a lot more than the Gifted trailer. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would Well, I could that. tell yeah. what Black Lightning was about yes. more than yes. Gifted. Yes. Right, yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 yeah, and it made me even more concerned after watching this trailer 
for The Gifted. Because mm -hmm. I was actually really looking forward to The Gifted. Based on that trailer and based on this trailer, I'm like, okay, if I had to choose one show to watch, I would definitely watch Black Lightning. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought it was great. It looks awesome. Kind of remind me of like what I think they wanted to do with Luke Cage, which was to like make him yeah. really like human and relatable in a sense because he his main thing was he's this guy who's kind of reluctant to, to be a superhero but he was fighting bad guys real actual bad guys yeah and mm -hmm. that's i got i got that vibe from this a little bit um but it was really grounded which i really liked yeah I thought it was awesome yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i think you know for a superhero show when you get trailers like this it gets you really excited of like you could actually maybe try and be a superhero yeah. <laughs> like, I could do that. I could Come totally on. do that. Black Lightning. He's awesome. Uh, okay, let's get into the CW shows from this week. Again, uh, just a reminder, I mean, I said it 10 minutes ago, but we're not here next Monday, so we're talking this one, and then the week after that, we'll be able to break down all the finales, uh, give us a little bit of breather, time to think about it. So let's start with Supergirl. Uh, yeah, uh, Supergirl, to me, of all all of them, all of them this week were setting up for the finale, yes. uh, which will be this coming week, so Supergirls mm -hmm. will be tonight. And in all... Every one of these, Supergirl, Flash, Arrow, I felt like all of them were setting up, everything is awful, yeah, and ended on like massive, terrible things happening. Absolutely uh, in the case of In the case of Supergirl, it was that uh, Terry Hatcher took control of Superman, and yeah. he is attacking her. Um, but leading up to that, I sort of enjoyed that Supergirl was living in this weird world of like, because Terry Hatcher is fantastic, she's and awesome. she's so ridiculous, yeah. but like in the best way possible, so she's got like literally like this fleet of spaceships. They are attacking the hell out of Central like City. Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and you know it opens up with that shot of like Lena Luthor like laying on the bed in that Ooh. black dress. Yeah, it was, I was a fan. It mm -hmm. was so like girls been captured by a James Bond villain. Mm -hmm. Like I loved it. It's <laughs> it like uh, John Claude Van Damme and Lionheart. That's a deep cut. Um, uh, <laughs> but we no, had a, lot, a lot of good appearances too. A lot yeah. of good uh, cameos. We had um, oh, yeah. uh, Brenda Strong come back. Mm -hmm. You know, as um, Lena Luthor's mom. Yeah, and uh, I. Really Really liked what went down mm -hmm. with with Lillian and Lena in this episode. That yeah. because Lena obviously was in a place of being so betrayed by Rhea, um, mm -hmm. Terry Hatcher's character, and then her mom shows up and she's like, "Girl, really? You like you're trying to have this yeah. crazy alien right. be your mom? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I'm your mom. I know we have our differences, but right. like, let's save the Earth." Yeah, and then, exactly. And then she obviously double crossed Supergirl. Yes. In, in that thing. So mm -hmm. what what happens here? Does does do they like capture? Uh, Terry Hatcher, do they send her into a phantom zone? What happens in the finale? I don't, I don't know. Well, I don't think they'll kill her. They won't get rid of her. She'll be, she'll, she'll be, be around. around. They'll, they'll lock her up. Okay. Yeah. They'll lock her up in the Flash prison. They'll, oh. go, they'll go to the other Earth and lock her up in the Flash prison. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here comes the crosser. Here it yeah. is. And don't forget, it is. Uh, we also had the uh, the return of... Um, What's her name? Chris Flockhart. Chris Flockhart. Yeah. yeah. That was big. That was big. Yeah. I was, I was excited to have Cat back. Yeah. Although... Cat Grant. That's right. Cat Grant. Is that... She, the president has nobody else around her. She's mm -hmm. like on it. There's no aides, nobody. Hey, don't oh, tell yeah, her that. And then Clarissa uh, Flockhart just comes in and like, she's kind of just like a tabloid reporter. I know. But it, it, she's kind of like the tabloid right. reporter. You know the, um, <laughs> the reporter in Feud? Yes. Uh, Hedda yeah, Harper. Like her, right? She's like the Hedda Harper yeah. of the, <laughs> right, yeah. of the Arrowverse. Yeah, that's it, true. It had that, it, it definitely had that, it, this world is supposed to feel bigger, but it's really small because the president's just like, hey, come on in. You yeah. Know? yeah. But, oh, oh, also, the president's an alien. Yeah, oh, yeah mm. also, the president's an alien. But there was a really cool moment in the show that I was like, wow, this really feels is that the city's under attack, so you don't know when people are going to survive or not. Yeah. So when people are coming into the bar and they're this, it's kind of like, yeah, this fe we're at war. Yeah. We're, we're at war and things aren't going well. I, I really actually dug this episode of Supergirl. It was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to Flash. I think we can just fast forward to the end of Flash. No. Um, Flash this week. Er, sorry, did I say Flash? I'm Flash. Say... We're on Arrow now, right? Yeah, let's go to oh, Arrow. Oh, we got the spoiler. We can go Flash. We are. We okay, have Flash. Sorry, Cody. We have sorry, Flash. Cody. There's Arrow. We're confusing uh, uh, Cody. Uh, uh. We're confusing Cody. That's our fault. Make up your mind. We're going to go to Arrow. Okay. I told, that's my bad. Sorry, I'm sorry. Arrow. I'm sorry. Everybody got kidnapped. <laughs> yeah, the whole Literally world. The Literally, we celebrate cast. a birthday. We celebrate yeah. a birthday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Oliver Queen's birthday. It starts out real nice. Like, yep. what are you guys going to do for the summer? Summer yep. break. Like, oh, superheroes take summer breaks. Yeah, what cool, did cool. yeah. what, what Dig Dig was like, I, I would love to go fishing with my son, man. That's heaven right there, man. Yeah. That's you know, you could do that if you wanted to. It's uh, totally fine. Um, no, uh, mm. the arrow, th you know, the, everybody gets kidnapped. That's the thing is, last week, he's Adrian Chase doesn't surrender. Like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. what, what do you, yeah. I don't. You knew something bad was going to happen. The fact that Oliver like let this happen—it's his own damn fault. Yeah, it's yeah. just like his biggest. 
He's been a step ahead of him the whole way. He's kind of like, oh, we just surrendered. Everything's cool. Let's mm-hmm. have a birthday. Hey, dummy. You know, the thing Come is, on. Are, yeah. 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 what the hell are you doing? It was an intense episode. I mean, you know, Dolph Lundgren, you know, injecting him with that drug that made mm-hmm. him relive all of his painful memories, right, you right. know? I mean, and of course we have uh, Nissa comes back, which is exciting. Mm-hmm. I can't wait there until was the finale. A, there was a lot of people coming back this week, including mm-hmm. like, let's bring back everybody that was previously on Legends of Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Skart was all Skart right. and, a, a and, version and, uh, of Katie Merlin. Cassidy. Yep. Yes. You know, we get uh, Black Siren coming in there, yeah. and that was a great interaction between her and uh, uh, Paul Blackthorne's yeah. character. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, yeah, I liked the stuff with Black mm-hmm. Siren this week for yeah. sure, and especially because, you know, she... We've previously seen her sort of connection to Oliver Queen, so I mm-hmm. I like that like she was the one that was like able to like help him through the crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I thought that and you was... could see it did affect her message. Yeah, with it. I oh mean, totally. Didn't, she didn't want to hurt her dad, even though it wasn't really her dad still. Right. But she she was affected by it. Yeah, I think you could tell it's, it was almost like she's being forced into the role mm-hmm. of where she is by right. you know uh, by Prometheus there, but I. It, I'm the finale on Land You because we haven't been there. You get Deathstroke coming back. Deathstroke yeah. coming back. Hey, kid. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting there in that jail cell. I don't know how they get food. Um, <laughs> but uh, they're on, we haven't been there in a non flashback. No. Ever. Mm-hmm. So the fact that we're there fighting, all the people on there, we're in a battle in Land You. That's, that's awesome. That's a good finale. All right, now finally we get to flash. My battle on that one. Cody, you want to throw mm. up that flash? Yeah, thanks, man. Hey, Cody. Whoops, a daisy. Yep. So yeah, that keep that spoiler alert up there. I, I'm honestly, we talked about it a little bit before the camera started rolling. I'm glad. I am honestly kind of glad that they killed Iris. Not that I don't like the Iris character. Not that I uh, that I don't. But it shows that Barry isn't as good as Savitar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This stuff is finally catching up to him. Like, listen, dude, you messed with the timeline 600 times. Right. Things are not going to really be the greatest. Yeah, well, and, and Savitar was definitely a step ahead of him. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, he tried to kill him, and he uh, couldn't because he had the Philosopher's Stone. So, right. yeah. It, and this was the show, th- this was the week of uh, of CW shows being like, let's bring in these Legend of Tomorrow characters because Merlin was on Arrow, mm-hmm. and then Snart uh, was on yeah. Flash. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They all kind of start to blend together towards yeah. the end. What were you thinking, David Iris? Because you, I mean, if they bring her back, which they're going to have issue. to. That's my issue. So we have another episode. Obviously, we have the finale coming up. Mm-hmm. If they bring Iris back, this I'm talking about not Iris from Earth 107. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I mean, this iteration of Iris, then the show's lost me because then there's there's no consequences. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, totally the show doesn't agree. have to be Game of Thrones. People don't need to be getting their heads cut off every season, but at least have some consequences. You know, yeah. Barry kind of needs to pay for what he's done. He's made a lot of mistakes and stuff mm-hmm. comes to back to bite you when you mess with time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he needs to learn that. Well, and that was kind of what I liked about this season's mm-hmm. uh, Legends of Tomorrow finale mm-hmm. was that it they didn't all like live. The, the yeah. versions that we saw at the beginning of the episode, mm-hmm. they all died. Right. And it was the past versions of themselves that lived on. Because so, Sart's different. When yeah. we see Sart, it's different. So if they do bring back Iris, whether they go back and see her in another right. time or another Earth, she better be way different. Yeah. And not just say like fall in love again, everything's perfect. Like I don't want to see that again. It right. needs no. to change. Yeah. yeah. Now do we think at the end of the finale, like the last shot is Iris walking back into like a room or something? Yeah, like, see, that's that what happens. I, see that's, that's what uh, I'm I, and there's all that pain and loss and hurt. It's just it's it's useless. It's meaningless. Yeah. Like there's no consequences. Like why am I watching right. twenty three hours of the show? Yeah. I don't yeah. want to see that. Yeah, I mean if it ended with something being like, oh, you know, we could go to another mm-hmm. Earth and get that version of Iris, right. that I would be okay with. Mm-hmm. But like her just walking back in, I you too easily jump to, oh, cool, I figured out a way to fix this Iris. Right, right. right. And Barry right. doesn't have to pay for what he's done. Yeah, yeah, it's not cool. All right, finally, Sinead, we got our finale. We got our Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. finale. <laughs> this was awesome. I know, it was so good. Oh, man. As people are disappearing leftover style out of the framework, which was so cool, as you're seeing like the world literally collapsing on itself. Oh, uh, gosh. Man. It's like heart wrenching. I know. Poor Mac. Yes. It was, that was the moment where he just, there was just like, yes. Nothing there. It was us. Oh, it's terrible. The, the, this whole, and I, the action scenes with Ghost Rider. We're the best we saw all season. Yeah. When he's that the flaming whip and crushing everybody yeah. and seeing how scared Ada was. He's of, just the best. He's, he's just 
literally the best. I really think that they should do a Ghost Rider standalone series. I know they mm. really, they really Spin need it off, to put it on Netflix. Put it, on, I don't put yeah. it on ABC because they did a really good job with them. Yeah, they really, they know, they knew how to really make this character super cool. One hundred percent, and um, he fits perfectly so on well. that space. But I, mm. I, I really liked this finale a lot. Yeah, um, Agents of Shield doesn't come back until next year. Yeah, um, so it's a little, it's a little. Did sad. you like the Doctor Strange? Uh, moment when he like he whips yeah with the whip and then and he opens up the portal he walks um, in it's I thought everything was so cool like yeah. it, I felt like it wrapped up the whole um, LMD stuff really nicely and mm -hmm. they did such a good job of of leaving it open because what the hell was at the end of that like I where are they what are I'm they doing so confused but it was so cool to have that little teaser I was. Right really intrigued mm -hmm. and I just felt like this finale was one of the best episodes of the entire season and I, yeah I, that the, and the, the episode right before it yeah we're in some sort of space yeah uh, place right. I don't know but uh, now shield has gone to a whole other yeah. level and feels like I'll be right back like who's he talking to right I don't I literally have zero clue what the hell is coming <laughs> I, I watched the whole thing and I looked to my brother my brother goes what and I was like <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know at all, um, but it's it's really cool. I feel like yeah. I feel like we're on a on a good we got a, a good track. we got a little bit of a bow, and then the present like we didn't yeah. wrap. The well, present, they wrapped so. up the LMD stuff mm -hmm. and the Ada stuff, and um, also like who do you think is going to take over as director? I don't think it. I don't. So there's no Phil's more uh, Omara. Jason Omara's gone. No. Oh yeah, he's gone. He's yeah, gone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was like, no. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Was <laughs> well, but I mean. They, 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 there was a point where, like, can we bring him back? Kind yeah, of but then they but brought then. him back. He wouldn't be. No. I feel like they wouldn't want to do that because also it's like morally and ethically weird. Yeah. That's why I knew that they weren't going to bring his daughter back either. Yeah. Or Ward. It's just like, how are you going to bring someone back and then they're not really alive in this world? I do like so, seeing the. But if you were to guess, who do you think it would be? Because I, I really don't think Phil's going to take back his, his spot. Fitz. You think? I was going to say... Fitz it or Gemma? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. I feel like it would be one of the two of them. Gemma had the best... I think she had probably the best performance of anybody besides Gabriel Luna. She had the best performance all season. She was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Really, really well done. Well, you know, if no one's watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. yet, you have a very long time to catch up. Yeah. So a, do it. A really long time to catch up. David. One. Hey. And two, if you if you need your fix, uh, you, can go, you can watch Chloe Bennett's uh, Chinese pop career. Yeah. Uh, K-pop. She was, oh, yeah. she was really a K-pop person. Yeah, she, well, she was. Uh, uh, she, well, she's from China, so she. Oh, China, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, she was born in America, but when she oh. was like thirteen or fourteen, she moved back to China. Mm -hmm. She had a, a a quick but awesome pop yeah. career. Uh, that's uh -huh. amazing. And then dropped this video last night. It's I like, had no uh, idea. Oh, uh, uh, oh. Yeah, it is incredible. <laughs> it's I'm, so I'm good. listening to it, and Amanda comes out. She's like, "What are you watching?" I was like, "Sinead just sent me a video, a Chinese pop star of Chloe Bennett from Agents of Shield, but her name yeah. is Chloe Wang. She's a star. That's you guys so are watching." Awesome. Awesome. So good. All right. Let's move on to, we mentioned it before, but now we get to talk about the entire episode. Uh, Leftovers on HBO. Ooh, I know that we boy. talk about this every week and we say it just, there. I broke broke my heart on Twitter. Uh, RB3. RB3. I saw that. RB3 <laughs> said he did not Twitter like Twitter was leftovers. definitely on my side. Wait, though. like, oh, yeah. wait, he, did he just start watching it uh -huh. or is he like on season three? And yeah, I'll actually, find it. Read the tweet. Well, well season one it. is rough. I, I barely got through season one myself. I almost okay. thought about stopping it. I almost, thought, almost gave it up. Season one's rough. It's season tough Season one watch. is pretty good. I actually kind of disagree I appreciate with it more okay. now that I got through season two and I'm on season three, but season one was hard for me to get okay. through. I was like, this show is so bleak. It was very Remind bleak. me of The Handmaid's that Tale. That is true. That's why The Handmaid's Tale, except I for know, this last episode. I love episode. Handmaid's Tale. Yeah, so, uh, right, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Right, no, so Robert, no, no, Robert Butler the third. <laughs> RB3. RB3. Yeah, dot, dot, dot. Hashtag The Leftovers doesn't work for me. Respect the craftsmanship <laughs> yeah, and acting, but the structure is dying over there. numbing. The Sorry, is this numbing. face. What's Hashtag, this? What's this? I still love you, Lindelof. <laughs> this face. Hashtag, the this, one that's the... like. <laughs> <laughs> you know what emoji yeah. I'm talking about. I do know what emoji you're talking about. That one. Um, this yeah. one kind of makes me look happy almost. It's like it's more like. It's like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not how I feel about this episode I, I, of the leftovers. This episode, okay, the the moment in the show. <clears throat> when I was like, this is why Carrie Coon is a star, and I don't know mm -hmm. how she hasn't broken out before the show, and I mean, killing it on Fargo. Oh, God, she's great. It was when she goes, oh, yeah, so I was going to kill myself. As she's eating an orange, yeah. I was going to kill myself, I just do scuba diving. 
Mm-hmm. You're like, what? You're like, and a lot of accidents that happen in Scooter. And she's just nonchalantly, and you see yeah. the, the wheels and Lori's mm-hmm. head turning. He's like, well, I'm certified. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Like, well, how and, dark, but yet perfect. Oh, yeah. And her, and her, scene be? her delivery of it, too, was very much it's how somebody would actually talk about all the things that could potentially go wrong in a situation that they would probably never find themselves in. Right. You know what I mean? Because she's like, yeah, there's just, there's so many ways you can die. I mean, your oxygen tank can break. You can get a bubble in your blood that causes you to have a stroke. Like it was, her delivery was like, oh yeah, there are a lot of ways to die when you're scuba diving. Right. And I thought, uh, I mean, their whole storyline with Matt in the car and them in the Mm -hmm. van, Mm -hmm. that innocent stakeout and, I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the Metallica, uh, you know, the entertainment. <laughs> I mean, that was just, I'm listening to that going, oh man. When you hear a different version of an amazing song, whether it be like slow or something in the perfect TV show, yeah. like th- those stick out to mm-hmm. me. Like, you know, yeah. oh man. But the the this episode, when Justin Throw, when he pulls up on that horse and like, Jesus, I, I, I was just, he's like, he's a like, good hey. looking man. Like, yeah. he's just like, hello. I'm like, what the, what? Because of course he's just wandering around Australia on a horse. Because that's what you that's do. What the you only do. thing, I respect Lori. I don't think you needed to drug the whole family to have a conversation. Like, you know, like an arrow and flash. I was like, hey, give us some room. Yeah. Clear the room. She just drugs everybody. No, but see, like, the I dad to, is a little. He's, he's he, protective, yeah. John yeah. is a little. Yeah, yeah he is. The son is. And, and, you know? and she wanted one last time yeah, to talk to her ex-husband. Just him. Yeah, just, yeah. just yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. And I. I liked the scene that was just the two of them. It like was I, very good. It was very good. just, th- it was just such a nice conversation mm-hmm. where yeah. you did get that closure, so that when it went to that final scene of her being right. out on the r- on the raft with the scuba mm-hmm. gear, you were yeah. like, "Oh my god!" When that's when she when you see the wind blowing her hair, I'm like, "Oh, she's going back." Yeah, and then she cuts to I a thought, boat, and I'm like, "What the?" Uh-huh. F-? Well, even the final conversation with the kids, I was like, "Oh, maybe she'll." Not do that because she has family at home that loves her and seems happy. And yep. nope, still not not <sighs> no. enough. Nope. Also, too, I love short explanation, but very good explanation of what the her French origin. guy was talking about. Oh. Mm-hmm. She was like, "Hey, did you about that that French guy who like you know blew up the you know because there was a, some seven headed monster?" And then yeah. Matt's like, "Oh, that stuff in Revelations all about you know it's all figurative, it's all metaphorical, you know that kind yeah. of stuff." But that was just a cool little conversation because not everybody who watches the episode is going to go online and read the French translation of what that guy said. So I like yeah. how they just kind of covered that quickly and just yeah. moved on that. from there. It was. Um, <laughs> It's, it was just kind of a magical episode because you, they're tying up loose ends so well. It, no, we're actually getting you're like stressing me out. I'm sorry. trying so hard to block you all. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like shopping on here, <laughs> <laughs> and then I heard you say magical, and I was like, because hmm? <laughs> Sinead unfortunately I was at the has yet. She's at no, billboards. I wasn't no, I get at it. Billboards. I get it. Covering it. So um, keep talking. We, have, we uh, listen. We have two episodes left, and and. The, the way they're tying up loose ends with characters. And I will say, we got an origin story of Lori that we yep. never got before. And it was so creepy to watch because I'm, I'm sure you guys heard it, but she's in that room at the beginning and you mm-hmm. just hear a scream mm-hmm. from another room. Because I keep thinking to myself, and, and, and maybe this is why I love this show so much, is what would I do if I was sitting here, right? We're sitting here doing mm-hmm. TV talk mm-hmm. and all of a sudden David Griffin disappears. I'm just sit- <laughs> what, what happened? I hope that would be someplace yeah. magical. No, I don't, I, but I don't want to lose my best bud. No, right? I know, I know. That'd be sad. It would be sad. I mean, <laughs> I'm sitting here, Emma Fife disappears. I'm like, who's going to talk about AMA for 45 minutes <laughs> yeah. on the show? It is, it is really creepy yeah. to think about. So you have to, like, putting yourself in that mental headspace is kind of crazy. So when she, when they're overlooking and they're seeing that sit, that setup with the, and, and her and May's like, this is where when family are supposed to be yeah. with family. Again, another loose end tied up in such a weird personal way. Yep. And the score to this show gives me the chills, makes my hair raise, and I mm. love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful show. I mean, they and they they, they they touch on so many things in such a short amount of time. Eight episodes yeah. Yeah. to tell a very big story. And we got a whole Lori centric episode yeah. in episode six. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what the nice thing about having shorter seasons. You can really do that. Bing yeah. bang. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It was amazing. Emotional mm-hmm. journey. Yeah. Now, uh, on the flip side of things, uh, we're gonna go Oh boy. It's been twenty five years? Twenty seven. Uh, 27. 27. Though, in the original Twin Peaks, there was a moment in the Red Room where Laura's doppelganger said to Agent Cooper, I'll see you again in 25 years. 
Get out of here. Nope, man. that's a real thing. Holy uh, moly. Yep, so. There's, there's David Lynch. Apparently yeah, there David is. Lynch uh, predicted the future. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we had the return of Twin Peaks last night on uh, sure. Showtime. Uh, and this is David Lynch without the constraints of a network. Uh, yeah. So the thing about the original Twin Peaks, and it's a fantastic series. It's way, way ahead of its time. And at the time that it was on TV, it was really weird and creepy now because it's kind of a cult hit. I think that a lot of the people who love it, myself included, watched it later on. Like I watched it as an adult on Netflix and I was like, mm -hmm. what is this? This is like creepy and weird and scary, but weirdly charming and funny. Mm -hmm. It kind of blew up on Netflix like what, five five years yeah, ago? Yeah, about five years ago. There's like a resurgence yeah, of it. Yeah, um, and I think that the thing about the Showtime series and the reason that a lot of people really didn't like uh, the prequel film Firewalk With Me, uh, which tells the story of sort of like the last days of Laura Palmer's life, um, is because it was so much like darker and like it was way more of like psychological thriller horror. Okay. Not that the original series isn't that, but there is definitely a certain amount mm -hmm. of like, we got to keep this so it can be on a network mm -hmm. and we don't have to do that anymore yeah, you know to the point that you know you look at something like uh, Laura Palmer's body discovered in the pilot of Twin Peaks it's she's like perfectly beautiful and wrapped in plastic wrap and you don't right. like really see her naked body yeah. um and then cut to this Ruth. and you have a severed mm. head of a woman who's also missing an eye and they lift back the covers and there is like a bloated naked man body man you know what I mean? So this, uh, listen, you you guys. I say it all the time on here. I said it. I don't like scary stuff. I'm not really good. <laughs> and I'm sitting there alone last night in bed. Amanda's fallen asleep. She's way ahead. And when that glass box opens up, uh huh. Uh, Cody, you may want to. You got to yeah, throw a spoiler up there. That glass box. Something happens in that glass box. You're watching this super sexy scene with the girl from. Uh, Fuck me, punch me. Yeah. What's the, what was the name of the book that she oh, writes? Oh, that's right. She wrote a book. I forgot yeah, like, about uh, that. Fucking yeah. and punching right, is what they yeah, called it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And in, in Californication. And they're getting naked. And I was like, oh, man, something weird's going to happen. And then this starts going off. And it's like, it's like uh, what's uh, Slender Man? You know oh, that yeah. It looks like <laughs> Slender Man a little it bit, doesn't it? And I'm like, holy cow, it's this glass box. What's Slender Man? And I'm getting chills. And I just... Slowly but surely, like, <laughs> pulled the blankets up above my head, and it happens, and I was like, I don't want to watch this anymore. I got like, <laughs> terrifying. So instead of finishing it, I paused it. I put on Silicon Valley, watched that, fell asleep, woke up, and watched the rest of the Twin Peaks yeah. this morning in daylight <laughs> while things were going on because yes. it was really. I mean, this is one creepy, <clears throat> off the wall, yeah. Lynchian show. The pauses, he does things like I was thinking with like Soda Burgery, right? It's Where, room, that the room, room, yeah, room. The room yes. tone, the embracing of the silence. The, well, and, and he even, when you know he was making the original series, like he didn't want to reveal who Laura Palmer... Like It's not like at the end of season one you find out who killed Laura Palmer. You right. don't. You don't find out until season two. And you found out earlier in season two because ABC was basically like, you have to. Yes. He wanted to stretch mm -hmm. it out even more. So now he has the freedom to like do what he really wants to do. And, and it's just even more David Lynchy from the point of view of, okay, so it's a procedural, but there is a supernatural element to it mm -hmm. because basically the villain... Uh, in the original series was this supernatural being called Bob who like comes into Laura's room. It's yeah. very, very creepy. Um, and, but he also like possesses people. So the whole idea was that Bob actually like, he wanted to be Laura. Right. And so he was mm -hmm. like sneaking into her room every night and he was sexually assaulting her um, from the time she was really little. And so Firewalk with me is very much about how like she's resisting him becoming her. Mm -hmm. And, in some ways in her death, she succeeds in that. Cause he basically is like, I'm either gonna be you or I'm gonna murder you. And so mm. she ends up getting killed. Um, but then you find out that it was her dad who was possessed by Bob. Ray Wise's character is yeah. in Fargo. He's in yeah, Fargo. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, Ray Wise is yeah. great. And he's back too. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, we already yeah. saw him and it yeah. was so great. But he's not possessed anymore. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and he's also dead. So uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> no, we'll see. I mean, he was in the Red Room. So, you know. Oh, that's true. It was the Red Room. Um, yeah, but anyway, right. so, but once he killed himself in prison, he basically freed Bob to possess somebody else. That being... Agent Cooper, but it's like Agent Cooper's doppelganger who's in the real world while Agent Cooper is stuck in the Red Room. But because it's David Lynch, there is this whole idea of like, 
is that really what's going on? Or does Bob just represent like the bad part of a person? Who's the creepy dude in the prison cell? Like when like the, he's like just all crispy and like his head disappears. Yep. Like, what was all that? You don't know. We don't See, know yet. Yeah, that's a confusing uh, show. Yep. I'm telling you. It's, you I watched three. It. You watched three. The Showtime dropped four. If you're on Showtime, yeah. like show on demand, like yeah. there's four episodes anytime. out. Um, my mind was melting. David Lynch is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea what I'm watching. I'm into it, though. Yeah. But I have no idea what I'm watching. I yeah. think this is going to be something we're going to have to really yeah. investigate. And yes. with a lot of TV off network, and we, we have a lot of summertime yeah. on TV talk, we, it is summer break, but in a really good way of like we get to binge, we get right. to find yeah. shows, we get to get back to things we wanted to watch. So uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to all of that. And I'm really looking forward to Twin Peaks because, it yes, creepy, but really well done. Some great cameos. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, listen, we are really up against it time wise. Uh, we're supposed to do an hour. We're already at an hour. Yeah. The, so yeah. um, we're going to go to Performer of the Week, uh, the lovely Allison Keene from Collider.com. She's going to break it down for you guys right now. We're going to briefly do highs and lows, some Twitter questions, then we got to get out of here. So take it away, Allison. Hey, everybody. I am Collider.com TV editor Allison Keene, and this is a new edition of TV Performer of the Week. So originally I had Ian McShane down as the winner for American Gods, but I'm going to hit pause on that and come back to him later since I know that he will continue to be amazing and instead award Josh Segarra the TV Performer of the Week for Arrow. And spoiler warning here, if you aren't caught up with Arrow and the Adrian Chase storyline, you may want to ear muffet. Um, but for the rest of you, I've been wanting to give Cigar a commendation for a while for his dual roles as Adrian Chase and Prometheus. I can't think of another character that has so single-handedly revitalized a show like Prometheus has for Arrow. Cigar started out as a smart and charming confidant for Oliver and of course turned out to be a still charming but utterly deranged villain. He is so great at switching on the crazy and getting Team Arrow to play right into his hand, and viewers too, as he's basically a Joker type to Oliver's Batman. But his charisma on screen is what really sells this character and his storyline. Sometimes Prometheus' motives as they relate to his schemes aren't always clear, sort of like what was happening in the episode uh, Missing regarding the prison and Leon Yu and his machinations. but. It doesn't really matter because he's so much fun to watch. And Cigar's interactions with Stephen Amell are some of the best that the show has seen in years. Aside from Legion of Doom on Legends of Tomorrow, Prometheus is the most layered villain we've had in a long time on the Arrowverse. And most of that is due to Cigar's portrayal. Some of his best scenes were uh, right after he was revealed as Prometheus, but he was still working as a DA because they couldn't reveal the truth yet. And he was so smarmy and brilliantly villainous. It was really fantastic. And though Adrian Chase isn't a metahuman, he kind of feels like one. He's trained by the League of Assassins, he's very good at psychological torture, he's a very successful attorney and had a great sense of style. He's basically like if the Joker was on Boardwalk Empire, and I love it. Cigar has energized Arrow and has proven to be the show's greatest asset this year. So I don't know how things are going to finish up in the finale, but I hope that if this is his ending that he gets a great send-off worthy of his contributions to the show. So that's it. Josh Segarra of Arrow is my TV performer of the week. Josh Makuga, back to you. All right, we're back again, guys. We, I'm sorry, we got ahead of ourselves. We talk a lot about upfronts. Yeah. There's so much more TV to actually talk about. And again, uh, you know, we'll keep you posted on daily. We appreciate all the tweets about going daily on TV talk. It's it's out of my hands at this point, uh, but we're, we are working on it. Uh, this I know behind the scenes, there are people working on making TV talk a daily thing. So we're going to do highs and lows, and this is going to be the fastest high lows <laughs> we've ever done. Uh, so we can get to some Twitter questions, so we can answer some of your guys' questions. Sinead, take it away. Fargo. Good. Awesome. Hi, Michael Stuberg, Emmy. American Gods. Amazing. Sure. Good. Fills yeah. in all the blanks. Fills in the blanks. Background story. Yeah, good, good yeah. background story. That cook story. is the douche. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Better call Saul. No. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Yo! Yeah, sorry. Modern Family Finale. Don't uh, watch it. I cried. Uh, <laughs> there was a point with Jay and Manny. Oh, got me the tears. Doctor Who. Oh, freaking awesome. Really original concept, too, about oh. uh, people creating a practice universe to destroy. Woo! A Jack on Titan. Nothing really happened in it this episode. It was a episode. quiet episode. It was a quiet episode. It's it was a good. Qu calm before the storm. Calm Girl! Before Geralt! <laughs> it's Geralt! It's not Geralt, <laughs> it's Geralt. Geralt! Geralt! Samurai Jack finale! Beautiful send off to a beautiful show. Heartbreaking mm -hmm. and great. Uh, uh, Handmaid's Tale! Handmaid's Tale, the, the uh, Mexican delegation comes over, they see how things are, and uh, it's messed up. It's so messed up. You might uh, like this episode. Really? Yeah. yeah it's uh, we don't have time! Up. The Dark oh, Crystal wow. prequel series coming to Netflix. I don't know, it sounds okay. It's a Jim Henson company, it's Muppets! Yeah! Muppets. I don't it's know Muppets. how I feel about the director, but Thumbs I love up. Dark Crystal, it's my favorite childhood yeah. film. <laughs> All right, Orphan Black. Woo! It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. This is the final it. season? Yes. Oh. All right. Let's do some live Twitter questions. That was high lows. Woo, that was fun. Um, 
Live Twitter questions, hashtag Cloud TV Talk today. What we got? Okay, so first of all, really quick before we get into questions, yes. Mike Collins, yeah. um, he tweeted me and he said, I bet Colson and crew are in sword, and it's from a comic book, and I think it's ah. such a legit like it's um they're uh. it's like a space Looks space like shield? a space shield type organization. Whoa. But it it's says shield, here, aliens, but in space. Go home. Oh, yeah. wow. Shield, so. but in space. Okay. Shield, but in space. I think that's a very good theory. Spield. Yeah, Ooh, spield. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, Derek Spicer says Do you think a show is hurt when its showrunners try to inject their personal politics into it, a la Supergirl? Uh, sometimes. Some, yeah, that Arrow episode with the guns. Sure, like, God, yeah. Yeah. But guns are bad, man. Yeah. No, they're not. Have, yeah. I feel like I'm like, this is what we were talking about with us being excited about the show Mayor, that it's like, it is kind of this weird parallel mm -hmm. to actual politics, mm -hmm. but it's somebody doing good. Yeah. Ryan Murphy's big in that. I mean, you can tell he yeah, throws yeah. his, you know, but it's, he's a good storyteller. He's so a great storyteller. As long as you tell a good story, yeah. I mean, here's it's the thing. okay. Yeah. Most, most everybody in Hollywood isn't an extreme liberal, so right. they're going to yeah. force their politics. Of course. And everybody has an agenda. To some degree. We all have a bias. Yeah. We can't hide we it, do. you know, sure. so... Just don't, just don't rely on politics right. to drive yeah. the plot because we get enough of it on freaking CNN. Yeah. Unless yeah. it's like Game of Thrones politics. Yeah. That's, good politics. <laughs> That's yeah. different. Right. That's yeah. dragon ticks. Yeah. We all know that. Yeah. All right. What shows have you watched that were terribly cast but had a great story or vice versa? Like great cast, bad story. Ooh. Great cast. That is great. I that feel is like we one. just spoke about this like last year. Like poorly cast shows. Uh, to no, me. You know a great cast? Uh, was it Low Winter Sun? Great cast. Remember that AMC show with uh, Mark Strong from, yeah. Green, mm -hmm. from Green Lantern? Yes. Great cast. Yes. But the show wasn't a very good show. No, uh, so on the flip. You know, uh, Powerless had a good cast. Bad Not a good show. show. Yeah. But I think he's asking bad cast, good, good show. Good show, yeah. yeah. That's really tough casting. Yeah, I know. Because typically, even like a cast that's not great, if they're on a great show, it can elevate them. Especially if the yeah. writing is really good. It's, right. it's hard to mess up really good Because there's some actors on Battlestar Galactica that I don't see as much as others. Yeah. You know, not, I'm not talking about Katie Sack, but some others where I'm like, they're not, I don't know how good they are, but they're great on Battlestar Galactica. So, you know, it's bad, yeah. bad cast, like Heroes Season 2, when they started introducing mm. a bunch of those people, I didn't like a lot yeah. of those actors. Mm. I thought it was kind of cheesy. If we're talking bad cast, with what could have been a good story, freaking Iron Fist. Oh, yeah. That's like, the, oh, the, yeah. that's the, uh, the clearly the most relevant one that we've had in a while. Yeah, yeah. Except bad for cast. The, the bad guys and uh But it was uh, a bad Colleen story, though, so I don't even know if that counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Colleen, oh, I'm just yeah. saying like one person cast. Yes, yeah. but yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, what's actually name? Um, that was from Ms. Absent-Minded. Ooh, Ms. Absent-Minded. Ms. Absent-Minded. Amy Awesome says, out of the CW superhero shows, which one do you think had the best season? Arrow. Yeah, Arrow for sure. With I know a lot of you people out there are saying Legends probably had the best season of the CW. Yeah, show. I actually really enjoyed this season mm -hmm. of okay. Legends quite a lot. And again, it's a little bit shorter. So. If I was going to rank them right now, going into the finale, It'd be Arrow Legends. Legends would be second place. For yeah, me. yeah. Arrow, and I finally have like basically caught up with most of the season of Legends, mm -hmm. but kind of like putting that yeah. on. Uh, I would go Arrow, Supergirl, Legends, Tie, mm -hmm. Flash. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Trevor Jones says, where in the story do you think they should pick up The Witcher on Netflix? No, oh, David, that's a question. The third think. game is widely considered the best. I've never read the books. Maybe this guy, he's maybe he's read the books. So he might know more than I have. But in terms of the video games, three is the best game. But yeah. It's kind of towards the end of his story. Three is supposed to close out the story. So maybe before three? Yeah. Maybe, when, maybe when series young would be interesting. Yeah, okay. I never read would, the books. But I, I would say books. definitely not at the very beginning. Like, because right. you want to mm -hmm. start a story as late into the process mm -hmm. as possible and like show a little bit of the past. Like, I, I, don't, I don't need to see him as a kid. Yeah, no. Yeah, I don't yeah. need like an origin tale. But the Witcher train is like a dark version of becoming a Jedi Knight. Oh. They really like kind of torture the kids and do experiments on them and like put, you know, potions in them to make them. Yeah. They, have, they, turn, they have cat eyes. It's all this crazy stuff. So that Whoa. actually would be cool, maybe. Cool. I don't know. Okay. Shame. CJ wants to know if David or Josh, David or Josh, has watched Sense Eight yet. No, uh -huh. I'm not watched Sense Eight, but I'm telling you guys that is I'm so Sense Eight and the Expanse are my summer shows. I'm yeah, right. Watch Pixar Pix Pix didn't happen, okay? Pixar <laughs> didn't happen. <laughs> This is too much television to watch. Like, I still, so I, I still, much TV. I still haven't finished Bosch yet. I want to finish Bosch. <sighs> Into the Badlands finale it was this week, and I haven't watched that. I, I will watched say three hours of Twin Peaks last week. week. Yeah. I finished uh, Master of None that last week. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Master of None's a good. It's a happy That's show. That's what I'm saying. So That's what I'm part. saying. Like we, I think that we just this is me going back to LA to Vegas. I just think we expect more yeah. out of our comedies nowadays, mm -hmm. and Master of None is a beautiful example yeah. of beautiful. that. Yeah. 
She nasty. Uh, Luis um, says, favorite childhood animated series? Muppet oh, Babies. Oh, see, we make for your dreams come true. <laughs> it was uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Oh, I love <laughs> Teenage, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles. Oh, Let's come yeah. back to summer. I know. I'm getting more DuckTales. Uh, yes, those ones. <laughs> Jay, give us one, uh, more. one more. One more. All right, J6 says, who do you want to play Geralt of Rivia in new Netflix Witcher series? Sean Bean or maybe Charlie Hunnam? No, Sean Bean's going to die, yeah. so uh, uh, we need uh, that to happen. He'll be somebody um, in there, but his character will die. No no, 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 not die no, in real no, life. No, I mean, his character will die. In no, not movie. die in real life. Oh, my God. I thought, uh, no. I was, that's my boy. That's um, my Sean Bean. Uh, Adam had a great uh, suggestion. Oh, Adam Smith from Adam Collider? Smith had a great suggestion. I mean, this is controversial, but Idris Elba would be cool. Ooh. I know oh, Idris has white hair. I know. No, but Idris, can have Idris long Elba white hair too. would be it's great. It's fantasy. What, okay. about, what about uh, Mads Mikkelsen? Ooh, Ooh, Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah, that's good. Mads Mikkelsen. Okay. And he's I from like that. that. Well, he's not from Poland, but at he's least from he, at least he's European. He's European. He's European. He's Finnish, I believe. Yeah, Denmark. he's European. Uh, Danish. Yeah. Danish. Yeah. yeah. So he can do it. Oh, Alexander Skarsgård. He, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, Alexander, I know he's pretty. He's a pretty boy, he but pretty. Alexander Scars. Oh, Travis Fimmel from Vikings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Travis Fimmel from Vikings. You need yeah. somebody. You need somebody. You need gruff. You need some gruff. You need a man. You need, man. You need a Paul Darkish man. <laughs> Paul Dark. Dark. Yeah, Aiden Turner. <laughs> yeah, yeah Paul Dark. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Bring yeah, it like back. That. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, that's it for us. Twitter <laughs> questions, live TV talk, extended edition, just because we're not here next week. Um, I know uh, I know it's a bummer because we won't get to talk about the CW finales right away, but we will get to them. <laughs> this I promise, and you guys can tweet us, and I'll give you some initial reactions. I'm sure David and Emma will mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and when we come back, uh, so I believe next week on an HBO, they're taking a break because of Memorial Day, so we won't get new episodes, so... We, we have two more weeks uh, for, for leftovers and, and the finales and mm. so much stuff coming up this summer. So we have a summer ahead of us, guys. A summer of great TV. You can tweet us some suggestions. Maybe, we'll t maybe in the summertime, since we don't have enough live TV, we can talk about some binges we're doing. I'm catching up we on the Americans right now. Americans? Oh, right I, now. I, that's on my list yeah. to catch up we'll, on for we'll sure. We'll do some throwbacks. We'll do all kinds of fun stuff. Maybe we'll have some more news for you. But again, next week, we are off next Monday. So in two weeks, we will see you. Before we get out of here, where can the good people find you on the internet? Sinead DeFries. I'm online at Sinead DeFries and at thatsoshinead.com. I will be interviewing those delightful South Korean boys that Emma loves so much, BTS, tonight. Um, so if you guys are fans too, which apparently everyone in the entire world is, which is <laughs> awesome, um, you guys can tweet me your questions for them too. Love it. Uh, David, Paul Darkish, Geralt <laughs> Griffin. Geralt! Girl, um, you can find me on Twitter, and Instagram at Griffin D E. Uh, also, can I mention my pick of the week like in thirty yeah. seconds? Oh, dude, I totally forgot. I'm so uh, sorry. Hold on. Time for David's pick of the week. Yes, thank you. So my pick of the week is the joy of painting. Now, the joy of painting with that look at that handsome man with oh that God. afro and that beard, Bob Ross. If you need some time to just reflect or you just want to have a nice quiet time, maybe you're trying to fall asleep and you maybe have like your phone or your iPad next to your bed, just play the joy of pain. You're gonna hear Bob Ross talking about happy trees and happy waterfalls and happy stones. It just make you feel happy. It's just it's just a show about pain. That's all it is. And that, being happy. That That's right it. there is an American original. It's an American original. I mean, there's American no big original. plots, it won't hurt your brain. It's just a man painting yeah. some scenery. I'm sorry, David. I didn't mean to. No, it's okay. I, I it's all right. No, it's okay. Really yeah, it's a busy show. It's a busy We're show. We're way over budget right now. We are so over budget. Adam, <laughs> just, I just got fired from TV <laughs> talk. Guys. That's why I'm here next week. Uh, where can the good people find you on the internet? I already said. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. All right. Uh, Carol! Wife. Uh, you can find me uh, over on this corner of the table being incredibly envious of Shanasty. Uh, and you can also find me online uh, at Emma Five Twitter and Instagram, uh, and come hang out with me tomorrow over at twitch.tv slash hyperrpg starting at one o'clock if you want to play some uh, Persona 5 or watch me play Persona 5. Do you Now, do you play K-pop in the background during that? I do not play K-pop mm, in the background during that, but we we could add that. We could add that as like a donation. You donate money, and I will play the K-pop of your choice. Whoa, okay, oh. nice. <laughs> I know what I'm doing after this. I'm going to go check out BTS on YouTube, check out some of their jams, some of their hot, hot beats. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. And you guys, everyone should go watch Chloe Bennett's song, too. Yeah. Yes, uh -oh. somebody tweeted it at us, actually. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. It's like this uh -oh. move. It's like... Oh, yeah. So she excited. is crushing it. Uh, oh, wow. Guys, I'm at Josh McCoug on Twitter and Instagram, the Josh McCoug Show on YouTube. We're here every Monday, except for next Monday. We'll have off on Memorial Day, but we will be back June the 5th. As always, put down the book. Pick up the remote. Girl!
Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.